Dude, I am I am absolutely spent. I'm very tired this week. Um, a bunch of things have happened. Uh, the first thing is, um, I walk into work uh, this morning. Uh, no assholes to, to finger, no Yay. balls to, to palpate. Aww. So I'm happy <laughs> for sad. once. Yeah, this is a victory in my book. But it was a woman who, who, was, uh, who drowned. Um, oh, or drowned like was it was about to drown How, what is the english there drowned implies that she died i'm yeah assuming, right? uh about to drown i don't i'm i, I don't know i'm not familiar <laughs> the with the stages of, of drowning, drowning. <laughs> <laughs> when people understand what i mean but there anyways, must be yeah. like one of the rarest cases you guys see over there like in the middle east drowning isn't that fucking impossible basically <laughs> like where probably like the richest woman in the entire city <laughs> you fucking dickhead <laughs> It rained over the weekend. We had 30 oh, drownings. Oh, my God. I yeah. stepped in a pond and fucking flooded the whole city. <laughs> you said drownings? <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, it was uh, miscellaneous reasons. Whatever. Anyways, so this uh, said lady, um, uh, thankfully, she's alive. How did uh, nothing. She's completely fine, stabilized. So that was the first thing. But my pain in the ass over this entire period uh, was uh, fighting with the stupid systems that they have. Um, and if you want to know why healthcare sucks still over the majority of the world, it's because of this. Um, in a lot of places, we have computer systems, so you put shit into the computers, but they still want you to write shit by mm. hand. So that's what the fuck I had to do. I had to write, I have to uh, talk to pay uh, uh, to patients and do my like you know my notes and everything. And then put them in the computer and then afterwards they're like oh yeah by the way you know the fucking paper that you, you have to print out write it all by fucking hand too <laughs> just so we can have it for the records. This is a garbage bullshit. Uh, but that was number one. Number two, uh, I uh, couldn't get access into the computers because I need a new ID card. Finally, I managed to get it. I ordered it. And I went to go take the photo. Um, and I've noticed I talked to the guys about this. Every time I go and I take an ID photo for anything, it's either two things. I either look depressed, like I want to kill myself, or I look like I want to kill you. It looks like a mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, from my, my uh, what's it called, um, my previous ID card, I showed it to a friend of mine, and they said that if I, <laughs> to quote, if I was walking at night and I saw this face, I would cross the street <laughs> because they thought I would mug them or some shit. <laughs> so I don't know if this, uh, but otherwise... Um, yeah, I, apparently, um, in my passport pictures, I look uh, like a pleasant, a pleasant boy. That's like That's a deep strategy yeah. that you're following right there, and that you should continue to follow. I mean, I know you can't help looking like shit in, uh, in photos. Compared to me, I always look lovely in photos, but I intentionally want to look shitty because if I'm ever running away from the law or if I'm uh, driving drunk, which I obviously never do, uh, but just in case, you know, I have all these scenarios in my head. I want my mugshot on my on my ID card to look as shitty as possible, so that when a border guard or a police officer stops me mm -hmm. and I look like i just got run over by a train they're just like oh it's a normal day for this guy he, this is just what he looks like on a on a on a, on a good weekend <laughs> yeah honestly oh there's actually two more pieces of information um another patient i saw today uh very old man he comes in and uh, no balls thankfully a very old man and he's like oh chest pain blah blah, blah. and i was like has there been something stressful recently on your life just one of the questions and he's like yeah um my granddaughter uh she's 28 she's been betrothed to this one guy for like 10 years since she was 18 right they've known each other for this entire period blah blah they planned the wedding everything's paid for everything and then this is like a few days before everything's about to get going and the sorry i'm getting a fucking call sorry <laughs> um everything's about to start uh to get going and the guy pulls out the guy is like uh fuck that no i don't want to get married um rip <laughs> just the after 10 years yeah i know what a son of a bitch honestly <laughs> <laughs> shit human being but i don't know why i almost i almost laughed <laughs> in the thing i did it he didn't notice anything but inside i had to actually suppress that reaction because yes that's not the type of pulling out that the grandpa expected if you know what i mean or hope for <laughs> oh jesus christ oh my. dude it's the guy's granddaughter I please still you know realistically oh if they want grandparents they want i their, mean probably I yeah, 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 we we have have the uh, but yeah hold on that was the first thing and the second thing that i was gonna say fuck i just forgot oh yeah uh i also got a new barber no i didn't get a new barber ah. i moved to a new place so i need to find a new barber uh, i went and i got a haircut and this dude most likely just looked up a picture of, of the of you like like <laughs> you know the avatar because that's the exact fucking haircut he gave me hey. it is it is one yes. to one <laughs> yes my yeah, yeah. brother's gonna be looking i didn't ask now, for it bro. <laughs> yes yeah Dude, I never asked for it. Welcome to the club of uh, good-looking motherfuckers. Okay, <laughs> I can't believe you. Like everybody I, should I told, be rocking a fade because I, we all should look. Like I remember. I specific. I specifically told the guy. <laughs> I specifically told the guy, no fade. I want to look professional. <laughs> I want to. I'm working in a hospital, dude. I, 
Now no, no, you yes, come in are. with these offenses. No, no, fine. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but the thing is, like, okay, when you go to, like, a hip and up, at, like, you know, like, a, a company, that's what you want. But when you go to see your doctor, you don't want to see the fucker with, you know, a nose ring and a fade, all right? <laughs> I don't have a nose ring, but you know what I mean, right? It's just, it seems like the image, right? It's like um, the guys who wear, uh, like, are they called loafers? Let me just... Yeah, I, I wear loafers. Come on. Does it offend you, Gopnik? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like loafers with, a sh- with, with, with jeans and the very short socks. And he's like, oh, I'm a hip CEO, right? That's a look for the, the business environment, right? When you go to your hospital, you want to see a guy who looks like a fucking doctor. <laughs> you want to see somebody with, you know, in a, in a man bun. <laughs> Actually, there's an additional segment to what you should look for in a doctor. I think my dad told me about this originally. Mm. You want a guy that looks like he's about to die, like the most unhealthy. <laughs> looking possible doctor ever because <laughs> this dude has not only been struggling with the diseases that his patients were suffering from but he's probably not having the grandest healthiest time ever so he cares you know he <laughs> experienced diseases on a much more personal level and therefore knows how it feels subjectively to go through them and has a bit more expertise on how to actually heal said diseases. So the the worse he looks like, probably the most Mm. more experienced (laughs) he is, if you know what I mean. (laughs) And he's probably going to give you much better advice at the end of the day that's much more realistic because he's a lazy piece of shit and I'm a lazy piece of shit. So he's going to try and find some sort of loophole through which to help me get better no, with yeah. whatever I'm <laughs> suffering from. Instead of just telling me, yo, eat healthier and exercise more. <laughs> yeah, you don't say, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the largest human beings I've ever seen in my life was my dermatology professor in med school. This guy was the closest you get you can get to the physical, human, the human representation of a ball. This dude was like, take, take a beach ball, or not a beach ball, like a, what's the fucking thing that yoga people sit on? You know, a the yoga ball, ball? inflatable fucking... Is it called a yoga ball? I don't know. But yeah, the big inflate. Make it like five times the size. This dude was fucking massive. And the one thing that sticks out to my mind is um, we were once in the examination hall and it was a written exam for dermatology. And uh, he wanted to go and walk around like, you know, just to be, you know, professor shit, yeah. right? Just walk around between the things. But uh, it was like a... Um, the classroom was like on an incline. So it was based on stairs kind of. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this guy was uh, wanted so badly not to do exercise that he walked up, took one step up one stair. And then he was like, you know what? Fuck it. He turned around and <laughs> sat back down. <laughs> Champion. Oh, uh, anyways. <laughs> do, how's it going with you guys? Anything interesting? Anything new? How's the Volvo? Volvo's all right. <laughs> Volvo's sitting in the garage. Um, I ordered a bunch of new parts for it. One of the headlights is dim, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace both headlights because um, I need to get this, this thing. thing. is never going to roll off the <laughs> fucking <laughs> This thing is never going to be The dim. problem is I need to get it. I need to uh, pass inspection before I can get it registered uh, and insured, which means I have to fix all the things that are would be considered not safe, like the headlights, the taillights, um, and then like the driver's side door sags a little bit, so I need to... like. You know, mm. have Kelsey <laughs> hold the door up a little bit while I uh, tighten the um, the hinge. So, but <laughs> ideally, my goal here is to do as little work as possible and just hand it off to the the mechanics that are going to do the swap. So, just waiting to hear back from them, and I'll say, here are some additional parts. Fix these. Why don't you just buy a whole roasted lamb and give it to the whatever municipality person who's supposed to do the inspection? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works like that in the States, but, you know, I'll give it a shot. Sadly. I'm going to start a new trend. <laughs> Buying someone a whole roasted lamb is like the ultimate expression of respect, or in this case, a respectable bribe. It's at least less obvious than a briefcase uh, or an envelope in the case of getting a car approved full of money. Yeah. But it usually costs you that, much, like, I, My brother works in the bureau, please. Yes. I have a cousin who knows a cousin. <laughs> oh, yeah, some cousin, favors. Best friend's cousin. Bribes are shit but sometimes they do help out and i think hakim can relate to this greatly <laughs> it's like a cheat code to get around certain things <laughs> but uh, speaking of uh, speaking of uh, horrible deeds i really fucked up the other day i'm over at the seaside and uh, for some reason my girlfriend asked me to uh, be a little bit more of a smooth skin yeah, smooth skin uh fallout reference oh, nice so i was like okay i'm gonna shave my uh, stomach 
uh, but I left like my chest here, but like I don't want to look like the hairiest fucking gorilla mm-hmm. over on the beach. But then I really fucked up and I used the razor directly <laughs> on my skin, oh, and mean. now I have like a spreading infection. I think it's that's not really uh, visible; it's just kind of Ooh, painful. Uh, I mean, I use it on top <laughs> of the shampoo and shit, but apparently that was not what I was supposed to do. I probably I'm supposed to use an electric shaver <laughs> or something. I mean, I, I, the, the women do it all the time i see my girlfriend cutting uh, like uh, shaving her legs using <laughs> just like uh soap in uh, in the bathroom but uh you know they must be oh built different God. or something because I, 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 my condolences yeah <laughs> no, you gotta use clippers there bucko you don't want to use a razor clippers yeah it's not that long no clippers you, you know like your electric yeah. ones yeah. Uh, yeah 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 i guess i should and now this shit itches and it's painful as shit we don't want to use probably a, you look... know the, the what's it called we micro abrasions all that shit so we don't use a fuck is a jt a razor a straight razor <laughs> yeah straight razor that's exactly what i used and i look like i uh, got like a puberty of the women stomach women are stronger than men in just about <laughs> every way <laughs> they really are cause i think also the i think the skincare routine also afterwards yeah. is, i'm <laughs> imagine you go i bet you you shaved you showered in hot ass water probably <laughs> of course of course everyone <laughs> cold water. yeah exactly and then you oh. just threw and then I, put a bunch of, I put a bunch yeah. of cream on it it was but it didn't really help. It just got greasy, and it probably made even more of that shit pop up. I look like I, I like, I'm pregnant <laughs> oh with the baby, God. but the baby is immediately in puberty, and the oh hormones are making <laughs> giving rashes <laughs> like to a, my fucking stomach. It, it, did it, have you, do you know, it's like, it's like Studio Ghibli if Miyazaki was an alcoholic. That's what <laughs> 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 oh. What's up, nerds? Today we are talking about <laughs> uh, my specialty and the boys here, my my little uh, Padawans here. We're going to be talking about YouTube, the YouTube <laughs> ecosystem, a little bit about the history of, of left YouTube, uh, where we've been, where we're going, and uh, why it's a, a complete nightmare from beginning to end. Also, also the approach, the leftist approach to online in general, not just YouTube, but we'll get into that. Sorry, JT. No, no, that's, that's all I got. So, fellers, uh, YouTube's been around for quite a while now. We were just little babies when it became a, a big thing <laughs> so who is the earliest youtuber you remember watching that had any kind of semblance of left politics you know it, like it's a hard question to answer because there's so many yeah. um but the one that comes to mind because it's some somebody i learned a lot from i think lots of people learn from uh he deactivated his channel a long time ago so i don't even know if his if i remember his name correctly but if i remember it was uh brandon cooney hmm. was his name uh he runs the capitalism 101 uh blog uh with the capitalism with the, is with a k uh, he hasn't updated it in years basically but he ran a, a youtube channel where he basically explained um marxist capital and other economics stuff. very he- heavily focused on that aspect um great videos some of them are still uh like uh they're mirrors of on youtube uh great videos and his blog is still up so you can check it out uh oh, that's but cool. yeah uh, if i remember if i remember correctly he was also like a classically trained pianist or something um, oh wow cause, yeah and he would have videos of him like tuning his piano shit like that very cool guy um but uh he got a, he had like kids and then afterwards he was like fuck it yeah i'm, I'm, I'm out <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm sure but, that was before youtube was really like you could sustain yourself with that, like before Patreon yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, people just putting up videos because they wanted to share them with people, which was really cool. I think mm-hmm. early YouTube was like, it was the wild west and there was a bunch of weird mm-hmm. garbage, but it was also really cool. Just people <laughs> like, hey, here's this cool thing I did. I made a, a jet powered leaf blower. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey, actually say what you will. This this wasn't a YouTube thing, but uh, I mean, it was uploaded to YouTube later, uh, later but Brother How. <laughs> the, the Nigerian guy oh, who taught himself era. Mandarin and started singing like pop versions of uh, Maoist revolutionary songs. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Hold on there, man. That whole that whole like starting point that mostly, in my opinion, got out of uh, Lefty Paul, be it on 4chan and 8chan, gave birth to what we know as uh, left content mm. creation in general today. Though back then they weren't really doing it in order to gain any sort of popularity, but it was kind of an extension of these massively heated uh, board debates where. Uh, 
<laughs> you just didn't have enough character uh, enough of uh, the character count limit was uh, too <laughs> short for you to reply to Anon number 743 so you <laughs> went on YouTube and you made a whole hour and a half rebuttal of their uh, stupid comment on uh, what happened on the 17th of December in 1919 and uh, it slowly went from these sort of uh, reaction videos uh, reply and rebuttal videos into people making dank memes and shit, <laughs> usually 10 to 20 seconds. I don't know if people remember forum weapons, etc., etc. And then you you got to a point where uh, enough people actually watched them that some people, yeah. I guess, uh, said, okay, fuck it, let's just record full-on videos in which we discuss, uh, you know, our belief system, et cetera, et cetera, and educate others, uh, but mostly just so that I can link that video in a super passive aggressive comment on uh, some noob, uh, noob's uh, fucking post over, over on Lefty Paul. And that's what I feel like was like the fertile ground in which every, from which everything grew. But it's so vastly different than whatever anything thing is yeah, like today that one, probably yeah. the youngins right now if they were to uh, get in a time travel portal and go back it, it would be very irrecognizable it was extremely niche and it was uh, very very passionate I would say even more passionate than today and uh, having the audacity to go on any of these forums or create a video replying to anyone or a video about theory itself without being somebody who carries resound amount of knowledge on what you're talking about you would be called out in a matter of seconds and ostracized from that group faster than you can say ostracization <laughs> i can't even say it you know i think the uh, something very interesting is you could really divide it into three kind of like trends if you want the early leftism online just in general not just on youtube um the first one is this one we spoke about uh not the first one that began but just the first one i'm mentioning is uh, the you know fucking youtube videos either shit posts or just very stupidly long replies stuff like that uh the second one i think is the random blog <laughs> blogs that people would run and the third one which is my favorite one because I think these are the ones I spent a l stupid amounts of time at, uh, when I like when I was younger and I was first learning about Marxism. Is all these like uh, online newspaper or like very badly organized? <laughs> like it's just it's like a PDF dump yeah. on a website, right? Like banned thought or like one of these. <laughs> It's just a website with nothing but, you know, and it's always the weird, it's it's weird fringes mm -hmm. of the political, um, you know, and I don't mean like a weird, like, uh, yeah, but I mean, it's Marxist, but it's always weird, you know, it's like, um, what the fuck was it? I remember uh, there's some guy who was like a hojist online, <laughs> which by the way, these people don't exist, there's all like 10 of them <laughs> in the real world, and this guy was so into the Albanian shit, he had lots of other goods, that, like it was a good compilation of some old books, so that's why his, his stuff was good, but uh, just going on this old like HTML fucking 3.0 website, right, with a fucking rotating rainbow text, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it's just fucking pictures of Hoja, right, or the fucking trot newspapers, mm -hmm. Fuck me, the shit where it's like you every article you look at, it's like thirteen thousand fucking pages, and no <laughs> one's read it. You look, you're just like, oh, you're the thirty seventh visitor published in two thousand and two. <laughs> no one's, no one's reading this. What the fuck? But yeah, it's it's yeah, it was it was the the wild west in a fun way. Yeah. Now it's a lot more. Dude, there there were like somebody would write a twenty page blog post, and then they would have like two yeah. replies <laughs> on the whole blog post, and. Uh, they would write another 25-page <laughs> response yeah. to the one comment that they got on the blog post. And then they would get two more comments on that one, and that would lead into these websites full well, of What did Lenin do compared to others? It's just that Lenin <laughs> was more productive in other spheres. Exactly. <laughs> and going yeah, over half his, his, half his blog. shit is, is, is the same, exact same thing, right? Half of Mao's uh, newspaper like article uh, editorials are, are, is, is exactly just this. It's naming random people that you've never heard of and <laughs> <laughs> writings that you'll never read. He's like, this cunt is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically that's what it boils down to what this the stuff he says but yeah um what was i gonna say nowadays it's a lot more diverse right you want media criticism here it is you want fucking i don't know the marxist the analysis of shrek which, <laughs> <laughs> and by the way uh a patreon call <laughs> T two thousand patrons we're gonna watch all the shrek movies and we're gonna <laughs> write a three like, volume joking, but, uh, work yeah. on it yeah Okay, not a three-volume work. But we'll we can we'll host a live a live 
a live event, <laughs> either online or in person. Depends on how long, we, how long it is from yeah, now. No and we're going to go systematically through every single point of Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the political nuances, the cl- uh, points of class struggle. But anyways, yeah, my point being is that whatever you want, it's there. Even I remember I saw this video, um, uh, or like this video was recommended to me. It's like, oh, the beauty industry and like makeup industry mm. and like the like a capitalist or a Marxist critique of it. And uh, this is something that if you were to go back to like 2012, I'm not talking about 30 years ago, 2012, not that long ago, nobody would, you would not, yeah. you're alone in this. You're probably going to have to go to some specialized literature to find anything relevant. And but and like learning anything online, especially at that time, felt extremely gatekept, but not like, oh, you're not one of yeah. us, you can't discuss this. But like you have to earn <laughs> your you right to apart, discuss yeah. this. So they tear <laughs> apart absolutely yeah. every single thing you say. So everybody ends up just being a lurker and reading <laughs> as much as possible that, you know, the, the big boss on the server uh, slash uh, board uh, put out but you know you 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 get sucked in into this literal alternate universe uh, where, where you at, at in the beginning you just wanted to know more about this cool uh, political uh, movement that you just uh, learned a bit about uh, and then it, it goes into these internal strifes and battles and uh, the extremely personalized memes and uh, also just the whole sorry. planet <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just gonna, li- liberals on the walls are talking to me, so I just felt the need to say. Um, all of us, JT, Yugopnik, and I, have been formed in our political opinions by our real uh, life experiences, by our political development as a reflection of our material conditions. This was just one aspect in the modern uh, information age. Yeah. Back in the day, you had to go to a fucking, you know, you had to go to see the the dirty dude with a messy beard in a in a fucking uh, shitty coat in some uh, dark alley, and he's the guy who tells you about Marxism <laughs> outside the fucking factory. Nowadays, you can go on lefty poll and then, I don't know, be fucking shown the worst possible memes you can ever fucking see, but you'll learn something. So, uh, even like for example for me i never did the lefty poll shit um there are other like forums that i ended up uh going on uh, they're all gone now but uh and some random youtube stuff and shit like that. that's what i did um but the, my point being is that in this modern information age this is how you reach people um and that's how why we're talking about this because eventually you're gonna hear that some dumbass is gonna be like oh but you know um <laughs> you guys are larping because <laughs> you went on the internet to read about marxism no no i i fucking stealed through the struggle as a fucking 12 year old yeah. i i just through osmosis from the environment i absorbed marx fuck you i had bombs <laughs> dropped on me that's enough <laughs> okay if i want to find marx i had to wait for the fucking internet connection to uh dude i didn't have wi-fi until like 20 2013 2014 something like this so you can't fucking bullshit me <laughs> sorry anyways go on let's go a little bit more recent on the timeline so from humble beginnings uh youtube developed from a glorious wasteland of like people teaching you how to solve rubik's cubes and making various homemade explosives to <laughs> becoming more niche so one of the first mm. i i guess i don't know if you'd call it lucrative yet but one of the first successful niches was the kind of the anti-social justice warrior click of uh, youtubers that cringe that became uh. very very popular uh especially with uh young white men um like and I, even me, like I remember watching some of this stuff, and I was like, yeah, you know, because they had a relationship kind of with um, like the angry atheist YouTubers, those kind of people who, and not the channel specifically, yeah, the but the, the gamers, yeah, the game, the <laughs> who became the gamers, the ones who <laughs> were angry at anybody who espoused any form of you know personal faith or whatever, um, and that often went hand in hand. That that uh, Venn diagram intersected with. Uh, the anti SJW ones. So, what do you guys think about that? What what became of them? Because they were very dominant for quite a while. And are they are they still around? Is that something you guys see when you're braving the YouTube algorithm, or or have they become something else? So, there's a few questions there. Uh, when they became extremely popular, was that just the work of the algorithm uh, doing its own thing and realizing that reactionary content uh, brings a lot of eyeballs and you can make a lot of money? Or was this a uh, concentrated effort by a malignant force that wanted to introduce as many many young people to reactionary sentiments as possible. I don't know. I don't think anybody will be able to answer that specific question. And yes, I know that I sound very conspiratorial with my latter suggestion, but at the end of the day, it was so profoundly influential and so incredibly successful. And it did turn a whole uh, whole 
part of uh, generations born after, let's say, 1989 and 1990 into uh, potential reactionaries. But that conversation aside, the anti-SJW wave was so massive that it created uh, arguably after gaming and makeup tutorials one of the biggest spheres on on the entire platform so youtube needed to do something about it uh, eventually and not only that normal people needed to do something about it eventually so a counter wave to that was kind of uh, in the works and at one point was born mm. which were people who were anti anti sjw's and a lot of uh, these anti sjw's now 10 years later 5 7 8 depending on where you're from, uh, have turned into, I would say, three different categories. Ones that are no longer listened to or viewed and therefore are not making enough money. They were in it for the money in the first place, so they're they're out. They don't their channels don't exist, it's deleted, they are they've gone back to their day jobs, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This category number two, genuine believers which are still printing out videos, some of them extremely successful, like uh, Ben Shapiro, for example. Some of them uh, extremely underground uh, but they're pushing for it uh, partially because you know the shill is still alive so for the money but most of them for the fact that they went through the adpocalypse which we all remember uh, and continued with the uh, with you know the grind means that they are proper reactionaries proper right wing mm -hmm. who still want to push it and then there's a third category which is now growing in size which is extremely interesting to me which from one extent I am saluting and approving of but from another Another, I am very suspicious on why they're doing it. And what am I talking about here is X and the SJW is becoming now pa part of the left and uh, becoming uh, these uh, spokespeople for uh, yeah, you know, the center, etc. Yeah, for for my perspective, I think that that whole um, worldview, I guess, kind of got repackaged and that approach to content developed into the debate sphere we have today. Because with the um, with the anti SJW stuff and with the uh, the sort of Reddit atheism stuff, the whole goal was not to really educate people. It was to learn from these angry content creators how to dunk on people in your own life, like how to how to have these pithy one-liners to make people feel bad or to make them feel stupid, and that I think has become you know, the debate bro thing. Like, you've got a lot of people, and I don't want to name any names or anything, that are not really contributing anything except uh, to their own clout. They're just, they might know a little bit of theory enough to get them by, and then they just talk and talk and talk until yeah. they get a good clip that they can put up uh, and make somebody else look bad, which is incredibly unhealthy, but it's still just like the the old anti SJW stuff. It's incredibly popular, especially to younger viewers, and it's it's toxic. It's, it's inflammatory, it, right? Exactly. It's yeah. very. It's a sort of uh, nonsense. I, I get you know, like when you're young and you're very impressionable, and you want to oh, you want to see somebody fucking dunked on. Yeah, oh, yeah. he got destroyed. <laughs> like this, this, like this shit. That once you you know grow up a little bit, you realize like this is not useful for anything, mm -hmm. right? And I'll, like it's exactly like how you opening said. There's some of them who may have genuinely shifted their opinions, but I think there are quite a few of them as well who basically saw a new lucrative sphere. Like the um, pendulum went went kind of far right. And now it's swung the other way, but not to the far left. It's just kind of swung inwards um, where uh, people want the aesthetics of being left because as always, the aesthetics of being left, of being revolutionary, of, uh, you know, like being against the system, these have always been popular, right? But the actual substance of the things that are being said is nothing truly uh, leftist. It's not, you're not really talking about capitalism. You're talking about why, I don't know, fucking... Uh, I don't know. Dawson's Creek is that a show? It sounds. <laughs> it sounds like a show. Is, is Dawson's <laughs> yeah. Creek a show? Uh -huh. I, this sounds similar. Yes. The the oh fucking why Dawson's Creek is transphobic. Like fine. Okay, that might be very interesting to watch. Possibly, but this is not Marxism, right? Yeah. You're not really. This is you're producing content that's pleasant and fun for people to consume. You're not producing something that is meant to to actually uh, push the movement. Uh, left words um and uh, just one thing to also to add about it is uh um some people might say like who cares why are you why do, why are you uh, even making an episode on this online sphere um well that's because we live in the 21st century and nowadays the biggest possible contributor to 
any political movement really is the online sphere the old idea of you just going out and marching and shit like this yeah cool that actually does help that these are important things that you can do but at the end of the day all organizing happens online all or the vast majority of education particularly theory wise when it comes to practice is a different story is online uh, most people find their first introduction to these things online so to neglect it or to take away from its importance right is uh, is the same equivalent of like in the early uh, 1900s refusing to have a newspaper yeah right which is what the, the the most popular way of people getting information at the time was right um that's why most fucking boomery uh, communist parties to this day are so dead set on having this newspaper culture because well back in the day it worked and they still haven't grown out of the fucking idea that hey nowadays we need to be on the internet we need to make videos we need to you know do the bisexual lighting and all that kind of shit <laughs> right to get to, to appeal to people yeah. right, jt gets I it, get it yeah. <laughs> But yeah, sorry, sorry, cut you off, JT. No, that's that's pretty much all I had, and I think you're completely right that it's uh, it has shifted to everything being influenced by what's going on online. And yeah, people can say like, oh, you know, it's that's Twitter's not real life and all that stuff. But you know what? I mean, it's that's how you get through to most people these days. Yeah. Most people are spending all of their time, all their free time, you know, glued to their phones or watching YouTube videos or mm -hmm. whatever. And, you know, that's not to, to, to judge people or anything. I do it myself. But if you want to reach somebody, then the way you do it is through online content. And that's, mm -hmm. that's I think that's why all of us do what we do. And, you know, who who understands this best? It's the CIA. They're the <laughs> yeah. ones who every time there's a fucking orange... Like, or, I keep saying orange revolution. Fuck me. A color revolution. Uh, or any time a, a type of fucking uh, American-backed coup or some shit. The first thing you start seeing is all these bullshit made-up accounts yeah. with some random name and 13,000 numbers. <laughs> and it's like, oh, and it's the copy-paste, like the SOS Cuba thing, yeah. which was ridiculous. People fell for it. Oh, right? yeah. To this day, yeah. Like, there is a global image that has shifted kind of negatively on Cuba because of the SOS was cuba thing despite the fact that what was it, it was like sixty four thousand retweets every half second yeah. or something insane like that was happening it's all it's like oh yeah um there's this one server that they're all pinging off of and all these accounts are like two years old and they've never posted anything except for a copy paste um text right it's uh, so yeah that's what i'm saying it's your enemies your class enemies very well understand the fact that's why uh they go and they're, they're trying to uh, um, buy that's why they own facebook yeah. or, or twitter or all these other uh, social media websites that's why they try to get access uh and buy for example newspaper um, or, or media companies that's why fucking bezos owns the washington post right the arbiter of uh, what's considered legitimate fucking you know journalism yes uh -huh. owned by the fucking amazon the the, the, the amazon uh uh, robber baron exactly i mean if you control the 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 means to distribute information then you can control the narrative and they you know those with money have have the means to do that better than little lefties online so it's it's quite a struggle <laughs> it's getting dialectical <laughs> <laughs> sorry go on people give so much shit to the left for all oh, you you know you're a communist but you have a patron oh you're a communist but you make 5k 10k 2k etc etc but uh, dudes like uh, ben shapiro at one point was spending ten thousand dollars a day on facebook ads in order to grow his platform the, the the amount of funds that communists have online in order to spread the message is not uh if it was even a million per year it would arguably be too little in order to yeah. uh, spread it if it even like a tenth of the speed that both uh, right-wing yeah. content creators but also like uh, media companies uh, have at their disposal. Because as we all know, uh, not a lot of people with a lot of money want to invest in uh, Marxist rhetoric because it is against their own interests, while being a right-wing uh, media personality slash content creator is so fucking profitable because everybody who has uh, an extra buck to share or a PR budget or a marketing budget will throw it your way because you are trying to preserve the world in which, uh, you know, that the investor feels most uh, comfortable. And so the next time you think about uh, taking a shit on, on a lefty for making enough uh, to, you know, uh, put bread on the table... Uh, remember that that those sums in comparison to that of your uh, ideological enemy are uh, pennies to the gold brick. And on the subject of uh, people just doing it for the show, I think uh, enough people have talked about this uh, extensively at this point. You 
as a communist online or a propagandist who is trying to push people more down the funnel. But if you find a monetary sweet spot, uh, be it with your streams or your videos or your online community, where if you push them down the funnel, you will be losing donors, you will be losing patrons, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because you will no longer feel fill their need for uh, radicalizing uh, information because they've moved on to uh, more complex things and eventually to uh, real life action. So what people do instead of being propagandists for the cause, they become their own little uh, cult of personality, uh, their own little fandom in which they uh, jerk each other off uh, constantly and uh, make each other feel good about how they're doing something for the actual movement while at the end of the day uh, just screaming at a camera for uh, 20 hours a day, which there's absolutely nothing wrong in that, just like there's absolutely nothing wrong in creating content for content's sake or doing the grind set, etc., etc. The only thing that's fucked is when you are claiming to be a communist yet you directly hurt the movement by uh taking people from potentially right. moving yeah. further down the funnel and just keeping them in your little comfort zone so that you can milk them for as much uh, money as Deba possible debate bro bullshit yeah yeah they're in too deep they already bought the uh, the cat the cat uh, ear uh, headphones <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's all i can what was i gonna say yeah crux of the matter is exactly what both of you said if they're thriving off of controversy for controversy's sake Right then, this, these people are not—they're not doing it oh because they care for the movement. They're doing it because there's a buck to be made in it. Um, and the one thing that uh, annoys me about this debate pro stuff—the reason I'm even commenting on it is because it's one of the most prevalent things right now. I don't understand why it's so popular. Uh, I, I guess I'm just fucking too much of a boomer for this. I don't know. But um, the thing is, discussion is not a bad thing. Even debates—they're not the bad inherently. But if you look at like. If you read the things that Lenin wrote, for example, when critiquing, critiquing Kautsky, you actually see something new being developed. You actually see the theory uh, progressing. You see new ground being broken. Is that the fucking yep. English phrase? You understand yeah. what I mean? Um, oh, I used one correctly for once. <laughs> fucking yay. Well fucking <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's like a warm hug from, from dad, JT. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um it's something actually positive comes from it but when you see two idiots who haven't read anything and they're talking debating quote-unquote debating they're just yelling at each other yeah. over something that has been solved a hundred years ago th that's where you know the the stupidity of it kind of shows itself and the, the pointlessness pointlessness of it or actually the, the the true nature of it they're doing it because they want the the, the controversy they want the fucking the clicks and the oh thanks for the dono yeah, you yeah, know that yeah. bullshit uh, excuse me, did somebody say cult of personality? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> but yeah, uh, so the, these things are just... Uh, that's one aspect, I guess, of it now. Do you want to move into the... Actually, this is a point. This is a point that you mentioned also, you got that I really liked, which was the, the, the de-radicalization aspect. It's exactly that. Um, they push you to the, ex the, the um, uh, boundary of what is acceptable, but still quote-unquote left, yeah. where you're at home and you're like, oh, harm reduction, like this nonsense. Um, but you're not going to actually push into, hey, you should join an organization and do actual work and agitate, organize, uh, go for a fucking food drive or some stuff like that. Um, uh, join, uh, create a tenants union or a, a try to unionize your workplace. This The, the stuff that actually matters, um, that will get people away from, you know, the uh, thanks for the gold kind stranger yeah. type of bullshit that happens in fucking Twitch. I don't know. Right. Uh, so um, sorry. Uh, the, 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 that's uh, all I had to, to, to say about that part. All right, so let's let's move on a little bit. Let's move from the negative things that we've seen on on YouTube and talk a little bit more about the, um, I guess if you want to call it more ideologically pure, less you know, less sellouty stuff. Uh, what kind of subgroups have we seen develop of the online left on YouTube? That's actually a very good, uh, very good question. Um... There's, this is like a kind of ties back to the beginning. This is something that I really like about the development of YouTube and just online left in general is that there is a niche for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and um, one of the things that have grown a lot is you have a lot of diversity of people uh, making explanation um, type stuff. And what I like is uh, back in the day, it was two kinds of things. It's usually either a completely basic 101, uh, what is uh, fucking wage labor, like mm -hmm. something simple like that. 
um, to something so stupidly complex as like, what did <laughs> the, the, the value form controversy? <laughs> you know, like th this shit, right? Uh, two hour long videos where some guy is like, mm, Malenko, what did he think? <laughs> like these, that's actually at least kind of interesting because that's more historical. Yeah. I'm talking about the really deep theory people, right? But that's what it was back in the day. Nowadays, you're seeing, you're starting to see a little bit of diversity. You start to see 102 level stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a little bit more than that. Um, a bunch of people that JT mentioned. Uh, One Dime is very good. Uh, his videos are all uh, very good. A very interesting uh, exploration of a variety of topics. Um, the Marxist Project was another one he mentioned, which is also very good. The Marxist Project I really like because he has a very uh, academic approach mm -hmm. um, to, to present, uh, presenting Marxism. Uh, he explains things like falling rate of profit. He has a video on that that's very good. He has, a, I think, a video on abstract labor, stuff like this. Um, interesting if you want to learn and uh, very, again, like I said, academic. Um, somebody that I would like to shout out because uh, their, their video is actually really good, especially for a budding leftist uh, who wants to get into the more scientific aspects of um, uh, Marxism, at least modern Marxism. Paul Cockshot has a YouTube channel, oh, really? of all things. Um, yeah, and his, his YouTube channel is really good. His audio is dog shit, and most of them it's recently, <laughs> only very recently gotten better. Uh, we really want to have the guy on, by the way, someday. Uh, but um, his uh, videos, for example, uh, on planning are very good. He has some videos on um, uh, modern forms of planning, uh, computer system. He even has a, um, uh, he even built a rudimentary planning um, program uh, and he has like tutorials on how to use oh, it, cool. tutorials. Most of the stuff is on his blog, um, but it's very interesting to see that you can basically go on his, on his blog and download the um, uh, programs that he's written and uh, be able to basically start b rudimentary economic planning of whatever government you want, uh, whatever country you want, so long as you have input output, ta output tables and so on. Uh, very interesting stuff. Um, That's cool. Yeah, that's exactly the the beauty and the potential of this whole project being taken online uh, is that now there's enough passionate Marxists that are experts yeah. in a vast array of fields from economics to politics to sociology to medicine to uh, fucking, I don't know, nutrition. Yeah? And all of these experts are bringing their knowledge to the forefront uh, through a Marxist lens by creating the content that they create. And this is extremely important because not everybody is passionate about the same things. Somebody's much more interested in the economy and somebody's a lot more interested in history. So when we have this vast array of different channels with a different level of expertise, we have basically created uh, a lot of new touch points for potential future Marxists who can interact with said content and can, through it, uh, fill the missing links in their own mind on why uh, capitalism isn't really working out uh, for them, nor will it work out for them in the future. And that's, and that's really good. And that's extremely healthy for the movement in the long run. Yeah, very much so. It's, a, I think, a very interesting and very important aspect uh, of the development of the online left is that you can exactly as you said have the diversity of interests so that every asp every side or every uh, perspective has its own the the strength of basically being so deep in it that you can deliver a message it's very nice again it's not like the um, the uh, aforementioned hojist <laughs> who was just very <laughs> into you know oh my god yeah. um, well it's nice I mean it's just nice to see we've got people who are you know climate activists who are starting YouTube channels we've got journalists we've got uh, people from various countries that have experienced uh, life under socialism so they can talk about their own, you know, actually existing socialist projects. And so you've got all these, this breadth of knowledge that you can draw from and you get not only the theory but like the modern day application of the theory and how it applies to everything around us, mm -hmm. which is the critical part to understand. You need to be able to apply it. And let's not forget, it gives us incredible legitimacy to have not only academics, but people with formal education in certain spheres coming out as uh, as Marxist. Right. Something which uh, I don't want 
I don't want this to sound like, oh, you know, you have to be an expert and have formal education and something in order for you to be anyone who can, uh, in order for you to be someone who can yeah. talk mm, about yeah. this, blah, blah, blah. Of course not. But what we are trying to say is that when you do have people with formal education and people with formal diplomas, people with uh, formal expertise, people with uh, uh, renown uh, subscribe openly to a certain set of beliefs and ideas, it gives the entirety of the movement a lot more legitimacy because let's remember the reactionaries rarely get to have this sort of legitimacy unless it's paid for through uh, corrupt think tanks etc etc where you have scientists which have literally sold their soul to the right wing devil and preach a shit that they don't themselves believe in but when it comes to the scientific economic science of uh, which uh, socialism is trying to present to the world, experts actually come uh, to our side willingly. And to see them not only uh, be ready to become members, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but for them to proactively create uh, agit, uh, agit prop online and offline is uh, is a very 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 is very good use because uh, as I said previously, uh, in order to be taken seriously, you need the serious people around you or at least people that are perceived as serious. And this is just a, a gold mine. Yeah, to quote Mao, no no investigation, no right to speak. Right. Yeah, and that's kind of a, a I guess a a maxim that we try to live by, and I think as any leftist should definitely be on as um and the forefront of one's mind um there's a a point that i actually want to discuss which is what does the the, the online left look like outside of the english speaking spheres mm. because a lot of us no i mean a lot of us just generally in uh, uh on the left um around the world like not uh, english speaking uh, have our own spheres have our own discussions have our own stuff um but a lot of the white western left seems to think that you know uh the the whatever the, the fucking uh, uh, English speaking YouTube side uh, has to say is the, is what you know the the perspective yeah. on the stuff is right. Um, I will give I think two examples, and that is the 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 Arab uh, side of um, like YouTube and just the internet, um, and the uh, Chinese side. I'll start with the Arab one. For the most part, there is a lot of leftist stuff written, um, but it's still in that primordial stage. Almost, it still feels like it's twenty years back mm. in, in the past. Uh, a lot of yeah, exactly. It's a lot of fucking forum posting and shit like this. There are some YouTube videos uh, or some YouTube channels, but they're not very good, uh, or they're still very rudimentary. The only ones that have uh, like a decent, like uh, I don't want to say budget or something, but I mean decent aesthetics and are trying to actually do something for some reason are like garbage trot ones. I don't know why. Like they're re- what, what I mean like uh, by garbage trot ones. I, uh, it's not like they're explaining things about Marxism. It's literally, it's like, hey, what is Marxism? You know, everything is Stalinist. <laughs> Every communist party is a Stalinist. <laughs> Stalin ruined everything. And I'm like, okay, we we'll, we can debate this at another time. But just for, a, let's say, an, a random Algerian kid, all right? What the fuck does what happened in the Soviet Union in 1928 with the expulsion? Of Trotsky, what, what, how does this affect him in any possible way, right? Stalin is dead. The Soviet Union doesn't exi- exist anymore, sadly right yeah. so <laughs> you know it's, it's the weirdest um uh, i don't know like again it's exactly like i said it's like where english the english side of the left online was 20 years ago on these weird historical debates or things that are so in in in, in such stupid amounts of detail that it's even hard to penetrate into the sphere right um, yeah, that seems to be a trot tendency across the board. It's a hyperfixation <laughs> on you know everything that happened seventy plus years ago. They're not going to come any closer to the present than that. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's ridiculous. It's actually kind of pathetic um, because at the end of the day, you know, like by the way, they're mostly a dying breed. I think the only semi-active Trotskyist groups that still exist are in some places in Latin America. I know Argentina has something, right? But every time. Uh, I've seen a Trotskyist. Uh, I've, I've seen. I've never actually seen them in person. These people don't exist in real life, in my experience. Um, they're mo- very fairly online. The one time I saw a Trotskyist group in real life was a uh, where I'm at the an IMT branch, International Marxist Tendency, yeah, which is a, yep. a, a Trot branch. Uh, they tried to open up a thing, and they had like a little stall. So I went up to them. And I was like, "Hey, uh, so what's up?" By the way, just to compare, in the 60s and 70s, I remember uh, there used to be uh, the Iraqi Communist Party 
would or other leftist group groupings in Iraq would be handing out Mao's works in like universities and shit right like in the on the campus grounds and they would go into like cafes and start distributing that's how how it was you know and now we're back to fucking trots and the shitty newspaper <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like why but anyway sorry um and i remember i walked up to the guy i was like hey i was already a marxist at this point and i was just like oh it's so cool to see you guys here i didn't know that you know uh, you were actually international. I thought you were like in Belgium and in like New Jersey, <laughs> right? And he was like, yeah, no, we are actually international. I was like, okay. And then I look at their fucking pamphlet thing that they're looking at. And th- I swear to God, the translation of the thing, the pamphlet that they handed me was Stalin, the grave digger of the revolution. And I'm like, mm. I'm imagining I'm some like tired fucking <laughs> like asphalt layer or some shit or some nurse or uh, some guy who works in a fucking cafe or restaurant or fuck it, even me as a doctor. I'm walking after a long day and I'm like, then I look over and I'm like, oh, some people are trying to do some political agitation yeah. of some sort. Ah, my, my curiosity gets to me and h- hypothetically, I don't know anything about Marxism. So I look at this and then I open up the pamphlet and it's like in 1927 at the fucking 17th plenary <laughs> session of the fucking the Communist Party, the Central Committee, they dis- the <laughs> Trotsky was voted, by the way, he was voted out with like 800,000 votes, the fucking bozo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> him and his fucking oh the, the, the democracy but only what it works for me <laughs> fucking dickhead uh, but anyways yeah um i'm looking at this shit and i'm like am i like th- this reminds me of being in like high school and you're just like falling asleep in class what the fuck is this shit yeah, and you what just year is it fucking, yeah. yeah yeah you tear it up or you fucking give it back and you leave i remember equivalently um uh there's an active a semi-active uh leftist organization and one day i would go to my post box and i see that they have a thing about housing and it's like a very nice laminated piece of paper it's color printed and they're talking about um rising price property price and stuff like that something that was written in basic like easily understandable language without any explicit like quote-unquote revolutionary uh, or communist message but it was there It it was clearly a leftist slogan uh, type of paperwork but I-, I looked at this i was like this is what should be done mm-hmm. not this fucking imt garbage anyway sorry this t- t- <laughs> derailed into <laughs> shitting on the imt i just really don't like them because every time i've seen them it's always like you know and i remember by the way on their uh, they had a facebook page b- back when like facebook pages were the shit um they had a facebook page and i go on the facebook page and it's literally just it again it's just stalin 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 trotsky stalin and i'm like what look I don't give a sh- this much of a shit about Stalin. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you give him this much of a... All right. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry, JT. I overtook this <laughs> fucking point. But, but yeah, it's just this is my personal experience. I'm sure both of you guys have had similar experiences with these yeah. type of, types of people. If you allow me to go into the Chinese aspect, um, people don't understand that the Chinese internet is larger than the entire English-speaking internet. Yeah. Um, and uh, one aspect of them is their leftist ex- uh, sphere is way larger, is way more developed. It's, it's different from us. In a funny way, yeah, actually, like, the way the Arabs are, like, 20, or, like, the Arab side of the left on the internet is 20 years in... You know? Dude, I don't know who did it, but somebody compared, like, a brand new TikTok account on, in China and a brand new TikTok account uh, in the U.S., yeah. and uh, we all know what TikTok is like in the U.S. and in the West in general. I mean, I like it, but it's not necessarily serving a grander purpose, but uh, the one in China, like, 85% of the content was uh, educational, yeah. ideological, uh, scientific... Uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then, yes, 10, 15% were uh, 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 shaking that uh, thick, thick uh, JT <laughs> hey, this pussy. Is, the Chinese are winning, but, folks. But, this is why. But, but, but still, <laughs> the Chinese virus, the TikTok which virus was TikTok. Is, is, uh, anyway. has been victorious. Yeah. But that's seriously, like TikTok can be a little window into the soul of a people at this point, I guess. And and uh, if it is a legitimate soul, uh, window into the two souls that uh, all I can say, I can't say which one is better. Which a one thirst, worse. thirst trap? But but one is better than the other. Yes, the first dropping <laughs> of, peak. of, of oh, ideology. Oh, <laughs> Son of a bitch! Like oh, you get what I'm saying, He's... sexy. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, what was I gonna say? Um, the yeah, the Chinese internet is like 20 years in the fucking future, man. Um, when it comes to the left a- left sphere, uh, not only do they have stuff, they have like anime type, uh, you know, like animations basically, where they have uh, explaining Marxism. There is an entire course that, by the way, thankfully has been translated. It's on YouTube now. It is a uh, what's it called? University course lectures. On Marxism, because, you know, in China, you can get a, a degree in Marxism, you can get a master, you can do a PhD in Marxism. The, the, the amount of resources that they have, um, they even have, I remember, uh, it's sadly not translated, but the, the Chinese um, videos the are, are available on YouTube, and it's basically 
uh, a show for like teens uh, and you call in to basically like a panel of people and you ask questions about Marxism, about sociology and stuff like that. Every aspect of Marxism that you can think of. And it is like their phone lines blow up of people trying to come in. And it's like you hear it's a 16 year old's voice and he's asking shit like actually detailed, very impressive knowledge that some people show that the, <laughs> no debate, bro. I promise you. As Joe, <laughs> I remember there was a fo- the, I saw like a clip. I think it was like a three, four minute clip uh, of some kid, sixteen years old, seventeen years old, maybe. And he calls into this panel of people, and he's asking about um, the uh, uh, Yanan Correctional. Uh, what's the English term for it? Uh, basically, the early period in the Chinese Communist Party, there was a political shift that happened. Um, very store, very like um, um, influential, Influ- influential, influential. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can't fucking speak. A uh, very influential point in, in uh, the history of the Chinese Communist Party. And he was asking some very specific questions. I had to look up some of the shit he was asking. And wow. <laughs> right? Um, of course, relevant to, to him because it's his uh, it's his country and his Communist Party. That's why he's so in tune to what's happening. But still very impressive that this exists. Uh, and, and like I said, they have uh, lecture courses. They have fucking everything. One of my greatest, not to be, not to sound like a like an ass, but one of my greatest uh, pieces of pride is that apparently um, some of my videos are very, oh, nice. very popular. They've been translated into Mandarin with like subtitles, and uh, some of them are put up into the uh, uh, on. Um, oh fuck! What's the? Is it called Billy Billy? No, that's the search engine. What's the? Their Chinese YouTube. Uh, Fuck yeah, people know what I mean. But yeah, and it gets the, 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 yeah, it has like some decent views. And I, I tried tra- Google translating the comments; it doesn't translate very well. But uh, there are discussions happening. I was like, oh shit, this is this is very fucking cool. That's awesome. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a poser sometimes, and I and I Google <laughs> myself. And recently, especially with my video on uh, the consequences of decommunization, Yugoslavia, Ukraine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, I was just scrolling, and all of a sudden, I saw like Chinese symbols and Chinese websites, Bangor, Bangor, and I opened yeah, it, and it was like a thank you. It was like a reupload uh, again on some video hosting sites, and there was like a hundred nice. comments and shit, and people actually discussing it. It, it. it felt like a compliment, you know. But it it feels shitty because I, I I cannot do the same, and there's nobody taking probably. Brilliant content that is coming out of there and converting it, uh, converting it to work that we can that we can check out uh, over here. Yeah. But that's the interesting thing is that their their side actually takes uh, like scours the English side for yeah. stuff that they will benefit from. They take it Far over and they active. translate it. Yeah. But no, I have never. The only thing that I've seen that was translated from the Chinese side was the educational course, and I think that was translated by them. Yeah. Not not any or yeah. I, I, I'm not sure, but yeah. Yeah, the only book like you can actually find that's like openly published and shared is Xi Jinping's book, right? We can all have our opinions on it, et cetera, et cetera, as we I think should. Uh, but uh, more more content uh, being available from from any part of the world is is very welcome. But no, it's 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 ridiculous the amount of literature. Um, you know, every once in a while, when you Google online and you uh, see the titles translated into English, but the actual text is in a different language, mm. and the amount of interesting books on the modern construction of socialism, like the intricacies of the modern construction of socialism, right, um, being discussed, and they have entire tomes, like volumes of works on this sort of stuff. There, there's an entire like a- academy for this shit. Right. Do you know, like the most interesting, you know, like uh, we, we joke about like, oh, you know, like the guy I just mentioned, Paul, Paul Cockshot, people like, oh, you know, he's he's some funny guy, a uh, retired professor who makes YouTube videos. He's been invited by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences several times mm. to go and give speeches in China, to go give speeches to like academics, Marxist academics, all PhDs. As, like, this is how seriously they take it over there. In comparative, of course, there's no state support for this sort of stuff yeah. in the United States or in the UK or in France or wherever else. So that's why it's like this. But I'm just saying the um, the impact, I think, and the um, uh, potential for cross-pollination is so huge. And the Chinese have tapped into our aspect, uh, quote-unquote our, I mean, the English-speaking side, uh, while the, the us as English-speaking uh, uh, side have not done the same for the Chinese. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Yeah. The, the reason, the, the thing that makes bread tube so funny to me is that um, I remember what was it? it was one of the, what's it called? Um, uh, uh, you can censor the, the, the name. One of 
videos um and uh, the uh, comments like oh yeah like uh, she's become so tanky recently oh god and i'm like fucking what yeah what what is wrong with you stop fucking stop <laughs> we need to make an ep- a whole episode on this tanky shit yeah. like the, the fucking term and how pointless and stupid it is jesus christ but yeah um yeah or people are like oh yeah you know uh you can again uh, bleep the name is kind of tanky you know <laughs> <laughs> unspecified uh debate bro is so tanky he's been really tanky recently <laughs> yeah oh. <laughs> my god people say jt is a tanky yeah i, I, I mean yeah. you know yeah that's uh, uh, uh jt you know why it's because you had the audacity to claim that the united states isn't absolutely perfect all right yeah my you bad. didn't denounce the the, the 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 evil asiatic hordes uh, the automatons with absolutely no <laughs> free will all right <laughs> It's fascinating yeah. how heated people get over that term, like one way or the other. It's just, oh, so unnecessarily divisive. And most people just, they throw it around without even considering what it means or, you know. All these terms are always intentionally misleading to an extent because you want to have as wide of a casting shadow at your disposal when it comes to pushing your community uh, aggressively against another community or against a certain creator which you dislike. So that's why these terms exist as an easy way to paint them and their work as illegitimate, horrible, and harmful to the movement so that you can uh, take a... It's the easiest way to just take a metaphoric dump on the entire library of creation that somebody might have behind them and delegitimize them forever. And once that tag sticks on a person, it's very difficult to unstick. So certain people use different quote-unquote tags as a badge of honor and have found it to be quite literally the only way to combat this pretty ridiculously stupid-ass fucking practice. Uh, But it also leads to uh, problematic behavior of its own because then you start uh, concentrating too much on your so-called inside group and you become kind of uh, exactly what you've been fighting at that point. Painting... In a in broad strokes, the so-called uh, internal enemy, and not being able to sit down and have a conversation from time time to time, and it's very toxic and shitty. And we know uh, that it uh, started from extremely reactionary elements of the online left, but uh, it is what it is at this point. It's uh, yeah, it's just, it's like oh, the, like they call. They're like, oh, uh, the Cubans are tankies, and the Chinese, yeah, and the Vietnamese Jesus. are tankies, and the Soviets are tankies. It's like, okay, so everybody who ever actually did anything, <laughs> was, like, I don't get it. What's the fuck? You know? Yeah. It's like, and then you see you ran in your Twitter replies, and it's two anarchists, and they're calling each other tankies. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't fucking get it. Bless their hearts. Like, what do you, what do you people want? Like, what is your end game here? It's because it's not socialism. That's that. That's yeah. what happens. It's, and when they describe it, they're like, okay, that's that's like capitalism with with guardrails again. What are you What are you talking about? Most of these people just want to preserve their fandom, and that's it. In the beginning, they might have cared, but at this point, they obviously don't. They just want a, a tiny cult of uh, usually underage people uh, fellating their egos, and that's it. And to just super quickly touch on uh, Eastern European, Central European, and Southern European uh, online leftist movements, quote-unquote, it it is extremely impressive over in uh, Russia, and it has always been in the ex-Soviet Union. Uh, There are channels that are so well-read and so uh, well-executed with content that uh, rivals 100% of anything that I've seen come out of the West, uh, which extremely argumentative Marxists which really stand behind what they're saying with massive, massive audiences. Uh, so keep a lookout to that. I have learned so much from those because I understand some Russian, but uh, unfortunately most of them aren't necessarily captioned. Uh, over in the Balkans, though, it is uh, a bit of a more depressing situation as it always is. Uh, there are 
leftist organizations that are realizing that their future is pretty much almost completely in the hands of uh, young progressive minds that are uh, coming up and that are going to get more and more radicalized as the years go on. So in order to uh, get to them, they're realizing that the internet is the only proper uh, approach and I can see some amateurish attempts at uh, at creating a online voice coming out from there but it's all in very initial stages they're very similar to uh, your homeland Habibi with you know people with boots standing in the middle of the street trying to give people leaflets and the only thing that happens is that people argue with them for like an hour and a half so everybody passes by the leaflet holder because they think their fight is about to erupt um, but I'm still optimistic, especially seeing the vast possibilities which uh, channels like this can uh, bring. Yeah. No, I was going to say uh, just two things. Number one, uh, of course, the you have naked. This is implicit implication. Implicit implication. Fuck that. Doesn't, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, but um, in case it was, nobody here considers Russia to be socialist, we're just saying yeah. that there are people who are genuine Marxists and socialists in Russia that happen to make very good content. Uh, that's number one. Number two, it's I, I don't uh, like this isn't a recommendation because I haven't watched their videos yet. But there's a guy who goes by Prime Numbers. Uh, I believe his name is Oleg Komolov. He is a Russian economist uh, and he's a Marxist, a Marxist economist. Um, and he has lots of videos in Russian about basically modern events, but from a Marxist lens and Marxist perspective. And he has some stuff on Soviet history as well as Soviet economics. Um, and he has an English channel that he started recently, like not even a year ago, uh, with a bunch of videos. I haven't watched any of them yet, but I do plan on it. Um, so, hey, if they're really good, then yay. If they suck, then <laughs> boo. I didn't intend for that. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's a, it's a definitely it's a world we're creating. Uh, and the internet is both a small and a large aspect of it. I think mm. that's the, 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 the nice way to tie this all up. Um, you shouldn't ignore it, um, primarily because, and this is a point that I like. I think we can end on, um, if you make a thing, any a YouTube video, a blog post, a fucking Facebook, whatever the fuck, right? And it, hit, it gets 3,000 views, 3,000 hits, right? That has gotten more pairs of eyeballs on it than most of the stuff that Lenin wrote before the revolution. Yeah. If it, it, that's actually insane to think about. I think one of the, uh, you know, like, uh, what's it called? Um, one of Lenin's more popular pamphlets was State and the Revolution. And in its first printing, I think there was 10,000 people. 10,000. 10,000. Mm -hmm. Most, you could shit out a video on YouTube and get 10,000 <laughs> views. Like, I'm just, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's, it's. So uh, it, it's very good to keep these things in perspective, right? You can reach so many more people with, in, such a, in a much more diverse and um, uh, malleable medium that you can basically, you know, uh, develop this movement in far more creative ways, in ways that uh, people still haven't imagined because of uh, the possibilities. So that's just my point. Uh, do not underestimate the power of the internet. Of course, don't overestimate it. You should be doing things in real life because that's where politics really happens. Um, but this is um, another great tool for uh, the uh, agit prop that all of us make uh, to be turned into real practical uh, movements um, out there. Well, let's end this with a, a short call to action. If you have any interest at all in making socialist content, whether that's a blog, whether that's YouTube videos, whether you want to get into streaming, whatever, do it. Give it a shot. You can contribute meaningfully to the movement. The internet may not be all of real life, but it is real life. Like You mm -hmm. can reach people that yeah. way, and it's a very important tool that we need uh, as many hands on deck to use as possible if you can find if you can find your spouse on the internet you can foment revolution <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> at least you can start the process yeah. yeah well that is all for today sorry this was all over the place that is uh that's my fault you got laid out a very nice uh <laughs> structure here and we completely ignored it so we hope you guys enjoyed uh this has been the deprogram i'm jt i'm hakeem is he dead <laughs> he's he's typing low <laughs> We're keeping all Internet of this. and electricity just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a time. Well, um... Uh... And he's you, Gopnik. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, they got him. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs>